Hello everyone, today in this video we will be revising the uh, IIT and CSL personal lab programs without going into much depth from the outer part only we will be seeing what each program will be doing okay so if you like this video hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe to my channel okay so the first uh, uh, program is uh, the A part is to create a Java class uh, student okay in the student will have these four variables USN name branch and phone number and after that what uh, we have to do is we have to create an array of uh, such objects and uh, in each object will be uh, taking the input of each student okay means each uh, student USN name branch and phone number will be taken and finally we will display this array okay for this we will be using two um, uh, two uh, classes here first is class student and second is cl uh, class student details let's see what's in the first uh, class in the first class we will have two functions read and display after creating the variables like usn and all we will take the values and we will write a function to print the values also okay then in class student details will be the main function here what we will be doing is we will be creating the student object of the first class and then we will be calling the read function and display function okay that's all what we are doing in the main function Moving on to 1B, we have a Java program to implement the uh, stack values like uh, push, pop and display, okay. For that we will be using two um, classes here. First is class array stack and second one is class stack. In the array stack, we will have the uh, functions as push, pop and display which will take the uh, values here. Firstly, we will be initializing the array in which we will be performing the stack operations in the class stack and uh, after that we will be uh, writing the top also. We will be having the uh, variable for the top. By using these two variables, we will be performing push, pop and display, okay. For the push operation, array of plus plus top is equal to item. For pop, top minus minus and display will be i is equal to top to i is equal to zero, print each time array of i, okay. And for uh, performing these functions, we will be calling the main function in the class stack and we will have the switch statements, okay. Means uh, case 1 push, case 2 pop, case 3 display and case 4 exit, okay. Coming to 2A function, we have the inheritance concept used. In this, what will be creating a super class staff. In that, we will have four things, staff ID, name, phone number and salary, okay. After that, we will be extending the staff class by using three subclasses, okay. Teaching, technical and contract, okay. In this uh, teaching, we have domain and publication. In uh, technical, we have to include uh, another uh, feature called skills and contract will have another um, variable period, okay. So firstly, we will have the class staff here and for the class staff, three um, extensions will be there means uh, three classes will inherit the staff and add their custom features like uh, for teaching it will be domain and publication for technical it will be this one uh, skills and for uh, contact it will be period okay and finally after these four classes we will have this uh, main function uh, main function in staff details okay so see here in class staff we will have read and display function means firstly we will creating the variable staff id and all then we will be reading the data and displaying the data okay we are just writing the functions for that same thing we are doing for this also when we extend the stuff, all the uh, string ID and all everything will come here and along with that we will write, uh, we'll write read teaching to get the domain and the publication input and display also will add it to uh, print out the values of this as well, okay. Same thing we will do for technical also including for skills and for contract including the period, okay. And after that we will have the main function class staff details wherein we will create three arrays for um, teaching, technical and contract and uh, get the data and print the classes. Getting the data is calling the uh, respective function and, and printing the data is also calling the respective function of the class, okay. Coming to uh, coming to 2B function, what we have is a class called customer wherein we will have the name and the date of birth in a single entity, okay. Like in variables, we have like int for storing the numbers and all, right. In uh, class customer, what we will have name and date of birth, okay. So initially, we will be taking an input of name and uh, date of birth in this format and after that, what we will be doing is we will be assigning a string tokenizer okay what does it do is it will separate the uh, separate the uh, whatever we entered here like name date month and year okay how will uh, initialize what to be separated is by using uh, string tokenizer st is equal to new string tokenizer name means uh, from where we are uh, trying to change it that will be uh, mentioned here and then uh, what should be separated wherever we see comma or a slash there we have to separate the values okay so that will be done as follows suppose that the uh, input is alex comma 22 slash 01 slash uh, 2003 then by using this um, delimiter character comma and um, slash wherever it is at that time it will be separated okay alex will be separated 22 01 and 2003 by using st count tokens each each one is a token so we will get the number of tokens here and then we'll print each token and add a comma okay so the output will be first alex then comma 22 comma 01 comma and 2003 so it's a single class we'll uh, wherein we'll have a main function firstly we'll create a string name and take the uh, date of birth also along with the name and then create a string tokenizer uh, assign the delimiter character and then count the number of tokens by using a for loop print each token and comma okay 
3 a is a very simple program we have to read two integers a and b and then print a by b when uh, b is not zero else if b is zero print an exception okay we'll have one class here exception in that we'll use try and catch block and then in try and catch block firstly we'll uh, do in try if a by b is uh, executed okay if it's executed then uh, the output will be printed else catch the error if uh, b is zero and print there a by b cannot be done because b's value is zero okay Coming to 3B, we have to write a Java program that uses the concepts of uh, that uh, uses the concept of multi-threading. Okay, in this, what we have is we have to uh, write uh, three classes, and one will generate a random number, a, a second one will uh, find the square of it, and third one will uh, find the cube of it. Okay, what happens in uh, multi-threading is we'll have three um, classes here which will be running simultaneously. Okay, so let's uh, see how to do that. First one will be class random thread implements runnable. If you want to implement the concept of uh, multi-threading, we have to write this code, okay? Then uh, similarly, square thread also implements runnable and uh, cube thread also implements runnable, okay? And we have the main here, main function. Let's see what each function does. Starting from the uh, random thread, what it does is it uh, generates a random thread and then it um, sends to the two functions. It creates t1, uh, t2 and t3, okay? And uh, creates a random number. T2 and T3 are the threads for uh, square function and cube function, okay? For each, what we'll be passing is the function name and the random number, function name and the random number. Then T2 dot start and T3 dot start, okay? Then it will perform the uh, both the functions simultaneously. When we call this function at that time, these two functions get executed, okay? In this, the random number comes and the run function executes. In this, we'll be printing the thread name, square thread and the square of the thread as uh, x square. And same thing for cube also. Uh, cube thread and the cube of the number as uh, x cube okay here it is cube okay and this one will be doing by uh, calling from the uh, firstly from the main function okay when you call from the main function firstly we will uh, uh, create an object of random thread the first class object will be creating and then uh, when it's created we'll make a thread t1 and uh, pass the object in it okay it means the random thread object will be passed in the thread and then we'll do, uh, we'll do t1 dot start after this happens then only the, uh, this code will run okay this code will run after this will run it will create t2 and t3 and then uh, pass on the values of uh, the random number and uh, calculate the q, uh, square and the cube of the random number for the fourth program we have to uh, sort the given set of n integers using quick sort in this we'll have two uh, one class only uh, we'll have qu uh, quick sort complexity inside that we'll have two functions main function and the quick sort algorithm in the main function we'll set a random uh, integer array by uh, creating an array and uh, assigning random values and then we'll uh, call the quick sort algorithm and then uh, finally we'll print the time taken to perform this uh, line of code and print the sorted array okay let's see what happens in quick sort algorithm in this uh, we'll have two variables p and r which are initialized as i and j okay i is the first node and the j is the last node here okay and pivot element is taken as first node always after that uh, what we'll be doing is we'll be starting from left okay while a of i is less than pivot and i is less than r means we are traveling till the midpoint here okay from i and here also we are traveling from j okay from the left here we are finding the smallest element means a of i is less than pivot element means whatever element we encounter it should be less than the pivot element then only we'll move forward from here also whatever element find it should be greater than pivot element then we then only we'll move backward okay and after that see here it's uh, moving backward j minus minus and this one is moving forward i plus plus okay and after that if it uh, reaches the uh, midpoint here at that time see if uh, this is the array here after we reach, uh, after we reach the midpoint or we crossed uh, we crossed this point and uh, i came here or j came here uh, at that time what should happen is we at that time we found the uh, correct position of a of p that should be exchanged with the uh, wherever we uh, cross the point okay else if we don't cross the point and before only we stop here at that time the i and the j value will be exchanged and then we'll continue with the iteration okay after having done that we'll pass the next half of the array in the first quick sort and second half of the array in the second quick sort okay program we have to sort a given set of n integer elements using merge sort okay here we'll have the class merge sort and in this we'll have three functions main merge sort algorithm and merge okay so let's uh, discuss each one by one same as the previous question in the main uh, in the main function we'll get a random integer array and then we'll call the merge sort algorithm and then finally print the time and the sorted array now when we call the merge sort algorithm what happens is it keeps on dividing until it uh, has only one element okay means uh, if this is an array here it gets divided into two parts 
and each will be called as msa okay means uh, the first half will be passed to the uh, merge sort algorithm the same algorithm and the second half will also be passed to the merge sort algorithm this will happen until we have just one element left when uh, there is a case that low and high will be same at that time this will not be executed okay the merge sort algorithm doesn't uh, uh, execute for single elements okay when there are two elements uh, means at least two elements then only this will execute and then it will call the merge algorithm now let's see what is a merge algorithm merge algorithm is uh, means that uh, two separate elements are there we are merging it to a single element okay so here we have to initialize the four uh, things here b r a i j uh, i j h and k h and i are initialized as low so uh, so h and i will start from here j is initialized as mid plus 1 so j will start from here okay so what we'll be doing is we'll be comparing each element in the same array from here okay just uh, sorting in the ascending order so we are, uh, we'll look for which element is smaller if uh, we, whichever element is smaller we'll be copying that element in the b array okay b is a separate temporary array which will be copying the smaller element if this is smaller we'll copy this one and increment here then we'll compare this element with this one which uh, whichever is smaller we'll copy that one and we'll increment from there like that uh, either j will cross this end point or i will cross the mid value here i or h uh, h will cross the mid value here if any one of these crosses the uh, end point here or the mid value here then the remaining elements of the other part will be copied to b array okay that's what we are doing here firstly we are uh, seeing uh, if it uh, if it has not crossed the mid or if it has not crossed the end point then only we will be uh, seeing which is smaller j or h uh, whichever is smaller will be copying into the b array okay and after that i if h crosses the mid j value should be copied to b else if j crosses the end point h value should be copied to b finally b will have a sorted part that part will be copied to the main uh, original array which is a okay that part will be copied here okay this is what happens in the merge sort the sixth day program we have to uh, find out the um, knapsack problem solution using dynamic programming okay so here we will have a class knapsack dp and here we will have the uh, main function and the other functions okay the total uh, three functions are there main function knapsack and read object in the main function we will have uh, we will have to initialize the wait array profit array solution table and keep table in keep table we will have the selected elements okay and then we will call the read object function and after that we will initialize the first row and the first column of the solution table as zero then uh, we will uh, call the knapsack problem and the op solution will be sent here the read object will get the weights and the profit and uh, what about the knapsack problem knapsack function in the knapsack function uh, we are uh, using two loops i will travel from 1 to n and j will travel from 0 to m what is uh, n and m see i are the rows it will travel from 0 to n and j will travel from 0 to m each iteration it will travel uh, like this then again like this and again like this okay for each row then um, in each row what we are comparing is w of i is less than or equal to j what is w of i w of i means weight of this and j value is this one is container able to uh, contain the object here which means uh, if it is 2 kg here is the uh, container enough um, big enough to contain 2 kg in it if it's yes we will uh, write the profit here else if it's not then we will uh, write the uh, previous value here okay which is zero okay and then uh, the second thing we will be comparing is p of i plus the value of the previous object okay see here the second is v of i minus 1 and j v of i minus 1 is the uh, previous row previous row element and which column um, j minus w of i j is the current column minus w of i means the weight of the current object if we deduct the uh, weight of the current object from the container at that time what was the value before that one plus the profit i am getting more or the previous value only i am getting more that is uh, getting compared here if the profit is getting more at that time what we will do we will initialize the current um, value as the profit plus the previous value uh, detecting the object uh, size from here and then we will be making keep of ij as 1 whenever we initialize a new value we will uh, make keep of ij as 1 else keep of ij will be the uh, 0 only and v of ij will be the previous value okay means uh, in case the profit is not more than the previous one we will copy the previous value from here and then we will uh, write in the uh, next uh, row okay and after that then uh, seeing the um, keep table will be uh, keep table has all the selected elements uh, wherever we select the element we will make as one we will make there as one so by using that uh, information we will be printing the selected elements okay this is the second part of the uh, knapsack problem in here we will be using the greedy algorithm okay so this is the class knapsack greedy and here we will have three functions main function read object and knapsack okay 
so let's see what each function does in the main function we'll get the uh, number of objects and call the read object and knapsack okay in read object we'll get the weights and the profits and um, we'll arrange the object in the descending order means when we get the weight and the uh, profit what we'll be doing is we'll be calculating the p by w ratio okay and then by um, seeing which is the most ratio that object will be placed first okay after we had uh, got the descending order array then what we'll be doing is we'll be calling the knapsack problem x of i is the fraction array if uh, it will have either 0 or 1 okay it will be corresponding to which object we select that will be 1 or else it will be 0 so we are using a for loop here from i is equal to 0 to n and what we will be doing is first we will be checking if the object weight is more than the container if it's more than the container break from the loop else if it's less than the container then uh, suppose that the container weight is 20 at that time if you have the object weight as uh, 10 at that time what we will do we will initialize that weight as 1 means that uh, that item is selected and then total profit will be added means that objects profit and the uh, weight of that object will be deducted from the container okay and then we will do the same thing again whenever the uh, remaining um, weight is uh, greater whenever the remaining weight is lesser than the object weight means if it's 10 here left and the object is 30 at that time what we have to do is we have to break out of this loop and come and uh, what we have to do is uh, we have to see we have to calculate just the fraction of the weight right so if u is uh, remaining as 10 and k object is 30 at that time 1 by 3 will be assigned to x of i then the total profit will be 1 by 3 into the uh, total profit of the object okay because only 1 by 3 weight is assigned then that will be calculated in the total profit and then it will be displayed okay the seventh question we have to uh, from a given vertex of weighted connected graph find the shortest path to all the other vertices using Dijkstra's algorithm okay so initially we'll have a class uh, Dijkstra's class and here we'll have four functions mean function read matrix Dijkstra's and extract minimum in the main function we'll first call the read matrix which will take the uh, cost adjacency matrix and then we'll pass the Dijkstra's algorithm passing in the starting vertex okay in Dijkstra's algorithm we'll have a graph like this and what we, have to, uh, what we have to find is if this is the source vertex from this vertex to all the other vertices what is the shortest path either through this one or this one or from this one like that we will be trying all the combinations and finding out okay so initially in uh, Dijkstra's algorithm we will have two arrays first one is for storing the visited or unvisited nodes okay this is S array will have either 1 or 0 if the node is visited that uh, number uh, will make as 1 else if it is not visited uh, that number node will be 0 okay and uh, d will store the minimum distance to the every other node okay if d is this array 1 2 3 from the source to first uh, node what is the distance that will be stored here from here it will be stored to 3 it will be stored like that what is the minimum distance that will be updating each time okay when we compare so the uh, code starts from here initially from i to n we will be initializing the s of i as 0 this is not 1 this is 0 so initially all the nodes are unvisited and d of i will be a of s i a of s i means source to i to vertex that uh, distance will be stored here okay if this is the graph here what is the distance from here to here that will be stored in d of 1 then second node d of 2 third node fourth and fifth node all distance will be stored in d of i and d of s is s is nothing but the source vertex okay distance to the source vertex is made as 1 and s of s s of s means source uh, vertex is visited already so that will be made as 1 okay after that what is the next code while i is less than n means um, n times we will traverse and each time what we will do we will select u u means any of the node other than the source vertex okay that will be selected by extract minimum that means we are selecting by passing this function we are uh, finding the um, shortest distance node from the source vertex okay so how we will do that we will be checking d of i is less than minimum we will update the minimum value okay and then finally we will pass the um, which node we want okay means which is the shortest node that will be passed here okay and that will be coming in u and then s of u will be made as 1 that one will be selected and then through this nodes will be finding the distances to the other nodes means uh, for example if this is the selected node which is shortest to the source vertex at that time we will be uh, comparing through this node if I am getting to the v node more shorter way than the direct path this is the direct path dv this is the path du and this is a of uv means what is the shortest uh, what is the distance from here to here plus this distance is it smaller than this distance if it's smaller we'll update that value okay that's uh, that's, uh, that's the same thing which is happening here d of u plus a of uv that is uh, that means this distance plus this distance if that is smaller than direct path then we'll update the value of dv which is the distance to this vertex from the source vertex as 
du plus a of uv okay and after that uh, like that we'll be doing on uh, for uh, the again till i becomes n so n times we'll uh, try for each uh, we'll be selecting each vertex as u vertex and from that uh, vertex will be traveling uh, traveling to the other parts okay then we'll be updating the d value each time okay dra will be updated each time we find a more minimum value and finally print the d value which will print all the minimum values okay in the eighth program we have been asked to find out the minimum cost spanning tree of a given connected undirected graph using kruskal's algorithm use the union find algorithm in your program okay so here we will be having a class uh, kruskal and here we will be having four functions okay main function and uh, in addition to that we will have three functions here okay what we will be doing first is in the main function we will be getting the matrix means um, whichever nodes are connected that one will be saved in that matrix okay like adjacent matrix and then we will be calling minimum spanning tree okay what does a uh, minimum spanning tree do in a minimum spanning tree first uh, we'll have uh, p of i as i means uh, p of i is this array firstly it will be initialized as whatever uh, vertex number it has okay means we have uh, not traveled till any path now okay means uh, see if this is the graph here at that time 1 2 3 and 4 okay these are connected graphs and what's happening is p of i is uh, same number as i means none of the edges are selected when any one of the edge will be selected at that time we will be editing this value since none of the edges are selected till now the value of p of i will be same as that of the vertex okay so uh, p of 1 will be 1 p of 2 will be 2 p of 3 will be 3 and p of 4 will be 4 okay and then what will be doing is uh, we will be finding out the minimum cost okay means uh, from all the vertices which we have in the whole graph in that what is the minimum edge here okay that we will be finding out if this is the minimum edge it has a vertex and b vertex that uh, that will be saved here in u and v okay if uh, an edge is there like uh, 1 to 6 there is an edge uh, edge distance as 10 that is the shortest distance at that time u will be passed to 1 and 6 will be passed to v okay so u and v will be passed and then we will be find uh, then uh, and then we will be calling find function two times first one uh, for u and second for v what does find function do the uh, see here find function will uh, execute this line of code while p of v is not equal to v v is equal to p of v so what does uh, this function do here exactly this um, suppose that there are three nodes here 2 3 and 4 okay 4 is connected to 3 3 is connected to 2 so what will the p values now in p values will be always initializing the higher value to the lower value okay means if you want to initialize p of 4 it's connected to 3 right so p of 4 will be 3 here okay and p of 3 it's connected both to 4 and 2 but it will initialize the lower value so p of 3 will be 2 and 2 is not connected to anything but it's uh, connected to 3 but 3 is greater value so in that case we'll have the same value here so what happens is we'll be finding out the minimum connect uh, minimum node in the connection okay so here finally we'll get 2 of 2 so what is the minimum connection we'll be finding out that using this code okay when uh, it will not be equal we'll uh, pass on to the previous one okay and again it will not be equal we'll pass on to the previous one until we get the same node when it gets the same node this will not execute and return the same node value okay so what we are just doing is we are returning the uh, which is the minimum uh, connected node okay after that uh, we get for i and j the minimum connected node if it's not equal that uh, that means see here in this case if we um, find out the minimum for this one and this one it will not be equal if it's 2 3 and 4 right because this will return 2 this will return 3 but if it's a connected graph 4 will return not 3 but 2 because 2 is minimum that's why it will return 2 uh, so by using the find um, function what we are trying to find is if there is a cycle or not okay because in kruskal's algorithm cycles are not allowed okay so uh, in this case if it uh, doesn't return the same value that means cycle is not there if it returns the same value that means both of these uh, nodes are connected to a same minimum node okay so in that case we'll be um, getting to know if there is a cycle or not based on that we'll be proceeding further if there is no cycle then only execute this line of code else make the uh, edge as 999 means uh, discard that edge and move on to the next iteration in case if there is no cycle then we'll be doing the same thing here which is storing the edge in a separate array and calculating the sum and finding the union what does union do see here for example if the uh, edge is 1 and 6 okay as uh, as i told you we'll be initializing the higher to lower means uh, we are finding the union for this right so it will be p of 6 is equal to 1 and not p of 1 is equal to 6 that is the uh, 
wrong algorithm. In the correct algorithm, it will be P of high is equal to low. If the two edges are 6 and 1, P of 6 will become 1, okay. Means, uh, that means P of 6 is connected to 1, okay. That will be denoting here. And this will be helpful in finding out if there is a cycle or not. And that is all what we will do in this program. Each time, what we will do is, uh, we will be saving the edge which we got here, which is um, not forming a cycle. And after that, finally, we will uh, we'll be uh, using this array to print the paths here, okay. The ninth uh, program is to find the minimum cost spanning tree using prims algorithm, okay. The same thing which we have done in the previous case also, but uh, the algorithm is a bit different, okay. We have two functions, prim and main. In the main function, we will do the same thing. We will first, uh, before that, this is the uh, example uh, graph here. The adjacency matrix of this is uh, here. We will be using three arrays here. The first is D array to store the minimum distance from the source node. And P, uh, path array for storing from which node we got the minimum distance. Initially, from uh, 0 we will be storing all the distances. So, here we will have all zeros. But then, uh, as soon we select uh, other vertices here, like if uh, other vertices are selected here, then from each vertices we will be comparing to all other nodes if we get a more minimum distance. For example, see here, when it was not selected, from 0 to 4 the distance was infinite, okay. But when we selected 5 here, because this is the minimum edge among this uh, group, at that time from 5 we got a distance to 4 as 25. So then here we will be updating 25, the distance is 25 and from which uh, which node we got, from 5, right. So this will be updated here, okay. For that path and D is stored and S means it is visited or not visited, okay. And let us see how to proceed further. In the main function, we will be um, getting the adjacency matrix, which is the uh, this one matrix by using uh, um, nested for loop and then we will be finding out the minimum node, okay. Minimum node means which is the minimum edge here and from that edge what is the minimum node uh, value here means source value we are selecting okay. And then we are calling prims algorithm and uh, finally pr uh, printing the output. In prims algorithm we will be running from 1 to n we will be initializing all the d of i values means the path values from the source to the vertex okay. Initially it will be from 0 to all other vertices that will be stored in d of i and then s of i will be made as 0 bec uh, because uh, none of the nodes are visited yet and then path of i will be source okay means from source we have stored all the values right so path of i all the values will be source okay and then uh, s of source will be made as one because it's the starting vertex and then from i to n we'll be traversing okay n times will be repeating what we'll be doing in each uh, line of code is whichever node is not visited from 0 to n and d of j is minimum less than minimum okay means you are finding the minimum vertex um, distance to the minimum vertex means among all of this which is the minimum cost edge here that one will be uh, finding out and saving the node number here and then we'll be selecting this node and then repeating the same procedure okay when we select some node like uh, for example uh, if we selected 5 here at that time we'll be making comparisons from 5 okay where we'll do that that will be done in the last uh, for loop in this loop what we are seeing is whichever node is unvisited yet at that time cost of uv is less than dv or not okay dv is uh, from the source node uv is from the new node which is selected okay if the new nodes uh, from the new node the distance is lesser like in the uh, in this case 5 to 4 is um, 25 in the previous case 0 to 4 was there which was infinite so this is lesser right so that one will be updating in the d uh, d vector okay so here we'll be having the lesser distance okay and from where uh, which node we got fifth node right that will be stored in path array okay and uh, by doing this for n number of times means for each vertex we will be comparing at that time in the d array we will have all the uh, shortest path vertices to the uh, other nodes okay and then we will be finally printing the we will be coming back to the main function and here we will be printing the output okay means all the uh, paths from the um, source vertex to the other vertices okay. Tenth a program is to um, write a java program to implement all pair shortest path problem using Floyd's algorithm okay. In this uh, algorithm, we are finding the shortest path from one vertex to other vertex, okay. Means how many pairs are there? Since there are four vertices here, A and B can be considered as a pair. A and C, A and D, D and B, D and C and so on, okay. So we are finding the shortest distance from all the vertex to all the vertex, okay. There are two possibilities. Either the direct path will be shortest or uh, the path through the other vertex will be more shorter, okay. For example, see here. The path from B to C is not possible, it, no, there is no direct path. Here, here it is from C to B, from, but from B to C it is not possible. Therefore, the path through A will be more shorter which is 5, okay. So like that we are uh, finding all the paths um, from all the vertex to all the vertex 
through all the vertex okay so uh, this is the adjacency matrix of this graph here and we'll be using three uh, variables which is k which uh, denotes through variable first a then b then c then d okay through which vertex we are traveling and uh, i denotes from which vertex means from a or from b or from c or from d and j means to from a to which vertex b c or d from b to which vertex b c or d in each case we will be uh, choosing one through uh, through vertex means if you are traveling from um, b to c whether we are traveling through a or through d okay like that uh, we will be trying out all the combinations okay so there are two uh, there are two possibilities of the shortest path either direct path or through some other vertex that path okay so in this algorithm we have uh, four functions here main function read and print matrix as uh, the name suggests it will be taking the adjacency matrix and this will be printing the shortest path okay and uh, uh, from the main function we will be calling these three functions and in the Floyd's algorithm we have three for loops here for the through and from and for to okay in each of this what we are doing is we are comparing whether through some vertex we will get more shorter path than the direct if yes will be updating that value through the more shorter path okay for example if i have to travel from c to d c to d uh, i can directly travel from c to d that cost i will be calculating and um, i have to travel from c to a okay from c to a i'll be calculating the direct path here and i'll be uh, passing through some other vertex means c to d plus d to a that is more shorter or this one based on that i'll be updating the a i j uh, a of i j value okay so uh, this will be done for all the uh, possible vertices from all vertex to all vertex through all vertex okay when that will be done we will have the uh, shortest path which will be printing in the final output okay to 10th b the uh, question is to write a java program to implement traveling salesperson problem using dynamic programming so our class will be uh, class travel salesperson and in this we will have two functions main and tspdp in main function we will get the number of cities initialize the cost matrix call the tspdp function and then print the minimum cost and the tour okay so what is in uh, tspdp tspdp uh, means traveling salesperson dynamic programming in this um, we'll start from a vertex and we'll reach the same vertex at the end between that we'll have many paths like a 0 to 1 or 0 to 2 or 0 to 3 like that it will depend on the different sequence of tours okay so we'll be calculating the minimum path which is the uh, most minimum cost which path will give the most uh, minimum cost that, that we are calculating using this algorithm okay so what we'll be doing is start is initialized as the starting vertex okay and then uh, we'll be passing on uh, we'll be making a call to three functions here okay and then this will make a call to two functions and we'll be calculating the minimum among this one and passing through this one same thing for this one we'll calculate minimum and pass through this one and we'll calculate minimum and pass through this one then among these three we'll calculate the minimum one okay so if start reaches at this point n minus 2 that means we have to find out the cost from this path plus this path okay that we will do directly we have the cost of each uh, vertex here uh, means from 2 to 3 and 3 to 0 the cost will be there in the matrix that will be seeing and directly adding if it's that the case because it's only one um, one sequence but whereas if it's two sequence we have to make two separate calls okay if uh, start is greater than uh, n minus 2 okay and uh, they will have two arrays here tour it will uh, save the sequence to be visited means in the tour array we will have the sequence like 1 2 3 0 like that and temp array will have the um, temporary array which might change here like uh, if you are at this point here it might be 1 2 3 and 0 so based on that it might um, so based on the conditions it might also become 1 3 2 and 0 so temp will be changing but tour will be remaining same okay so what we will be doing is minimum tour so whenever we get some uh, minimum path here means if uh, this path gave me 25 and uh, then the minimum tour will be 1 2 3 and 0 but uh, but I assume that from this path i got 15 so minimum tour will be updated as 0 2 1 and 3 okay so minimum tour will have the um, minimum cost tour sequence of the uh, as of now okay means um, whatever time we'll get we'll update okay and then we'll be making a call uh, to three times here because there are total four nodes so start plus 1 to n means start means start is 0 so 0 plus 1 1 and uh, n is 4 so 1 to 4 means it will travel 3 times each time we will make a call to the um, each node here okay so that uh, that is for um, that's what i is for and then um, initially we will initialize all the two values as same as uh, temp values and then we will uh, make changes here if uh, see i told you right temp, uh, temp will be changed here based on the uh, change in the sequence if there is any change in the sequence we'll be making the change in this part okay 
only temp is getting changed here and then we'll be making a call to um, the first node here okay means at the first call we will be calling through this then through this then through this each time we will be comparing whatever we cost got here is the next cost uh, more minimum if it's more minimum at that time we will ignore this one else if this is more uh, minimum at that time we will ignore this one like that we will do for three codes here okay that is uh, done uh, through this line of code here we will be calculating the cost of the first node that is less than minimum cost or not if yes we will proceed else we will not proceed okay this can be considered as a star and this can be considered as a dot here the star i have written here that is nothing but the cost of traveling from this node to this node okay that is given by star okay see here tour of start to tour of i okay start is this one and i is initially here so this cost plus what cost we are tra um, trying to calculate start plus one uh, the cost of this one we are calculating uh, by the same function okay recursive call after we get this we'll add with this one and keep the value here then again we'll do the same thing this plus this one we'll keep a value here then this plus this one we'll keep a value here so that i runs for three times and that loop is over then we'll be uh, calculating the minimum among these three okay that's the final answer when we get the minimum tour we'll be copying the tour value in the uh, minimum tour and then finally the minimum tour will be copied to main array which is tour and uh, in the output we'll print the tour value okay in the 11th program we have been asked to design and implement uh, in java to find a subset of a given set so a set will be given we have to find a subset such that whose sum is equal to d okay for example if the set is given as 1 2 5 6 8 and d is equal to 9 so we have to find out two subsets from this means two combination of numbers such that the sum will be 9 okay so the two subsets which we uh, got here is 1 2 6 and 1 and 8 okay so if we calculate the sum of these three digits and uh, these two digits will get as 9 so these two are the um, correct results of the uh, subset problem okay so how we will do that for uh, firstly we will be taking the set in an ascending order in the uh, s array and after that we will be initializing the solution array as all zeros okay and whenever we select any item at that time we will make the solution array of that particular item as one okay so here is the class the sum of subset we will have the main function sum of subset function and promising function in uh, main function we will uh, uh, get the set of uh, get the set in ascending uh, increasing order and d okay d value also will get uh, through the main function and then we will call the sum of subset and pass 0 0 and sum sum is nothing but the sum of all the numbers in the set okay so in this case the sum will be 22 then uh, what we will be doing in uh, sum of sub in sum of sub these three values are passed as i weight and total okay when it comes to this part uh, we will be first calling the promising in this i weight and total is passed and what we will be checking is if weight plus total is greater than d means what we are trying to calculate that total should be greater than uh, what subset we want right then only it's possible else if the total is only less subset can't be formed that we are checking and the second thing is if weight is equal to d means whatever weight we have selected now it's equal to the uh, sub, uh, subset sum or if the weight what we have selected plus what weight we are going to select that should be less than the subset then only we can think that there is any possibility further to include the sum else if it's uh, more than the subset sum at that time they should not be included at that time it will not be returned as true okay when it returns as true at that time only we will do the further code else we will not uh, do the further code okay we will change the value then okay so first what we will be checking if weight is equal to d means what weight we selected in the uh, subset here is that weight equal to d d is the sum of subset if it's equal we'll be printing out the value if it's not equal we'll be trying out two possibilities with the weight of uh, weight plus s of i plus 1 means the initial weight plus the next item if it's true it's fine if it's not true we'll uh, deselect the item and then pass the call the sum of sub function means the same function um, without passing the next element okay we'll be skipping the next element okay in that way when we will be recursively calling this function at that time we will get a sequence of digits here and each time we will be checking whether that digit is equal to weight or not if it's equal we will print out the weight else we will change the value and see again when all the possible combinations are um, seen and uh, output are given here then it will uh, end this loop and then uh, and then we will have the possible combinations okay in the 12th program we have to draw uh, design and implement in java to find all the hamiltonian uh, cycles in a connected undirected graph on uh, g on n vertices okay 
G on n vertices using backtracking principle. Firstly, what is a Hamiltonian cycle? Suppose that this is the graph here 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. These are the uh, edges which are connected here and what you are uh, trying to find out is all the nodes should be visited. Means you are trying to find a sequence in which all the nodes will be visited and return back to the starting node. Okay, We have to uh, not repeat any node twice. Okay, That's the rules. Now let's see how to find out the all the combinations of uh, such cycles. Okay, So firstly we have this um, Hamiltonian cycle, uh, the class Hamiltonian here. In the main function we will be calling mainly the Hamiltonian method and before that we will be calling get data. What does get data do? It will get the adjacency matrix of this Hamiltonian cycle means um, it will get the number of vertices first and it will ask if there is an edge between the first and the second vertex, first and the third and so on. One is for the vertex uh, means if there is an edge here, if uh, there is no edge it will be 0. Okay, That one will be saving in the G array okay. and then after getting the data we will be calling the Hamiltonian method. Inside the Hamiltonian method the next value will also be called. Okay. And what is a print no solution possible means if the solution does not exist at that time we will be, uh, we'll be calling this function here. Okay, So let us see the Hamiltonian method and next value. In the Hamiltonian method we will be starting from here. This is the uh, adjacency matrix which we have. The edges between are shown by 1 and the no edges are shown by 0. In the Hamiltonian method we will be starting from the first vertex which is 1. Okay, From the 1 we are traveling to all other vertices here. Okay, And we will be using a X array. X array means the sequence of vertices 1 to 2, then 2 to 4, 4 to 5, 5 to 3, like that in each we will be calculating. See here it is empty now. We will be uh, testing for 0, then 1, then 2, then 3, then 4, like that which will match here means the possible path is there. At that time we will select that vertex okay, and then we will print this value. Then we will try out for the next value. Let us see how that exactly happens. See here, firstly we will be calculating the uh, calling the function next value. Inside the next value what we have is x of k initially will all be 0 here except for the first uh, first vertex. Okay, This will be 1. Then we are finding out for the second vertex now. Second vertex first uh, here it will pass as 0, 0 plus 1 is 1, 1 modulus 7. Okay, This is the total number of vertices plus 1. So 1 modulus 7 will give me 1. So then I will pass here 1 and I will test for the 1. Okay, 1 to 1 is there any path? No. Then if it is not there it will come back to this part, uh, point again and again it will be updated. Then x of k value is 1, 1 plus 1 2, 2 modulus 7 is 2, 2 will be passed here then I will check for 2 here, 1 to 2 is there any path? If yes I will proceed for the uh, next here Okay, means next node. Here also I will see 1, 2, 3, 4 like that which is um, valid here that I will select. But while selecting we have to see one thing, firstly there should be a path between the two vertex. Suppose that I selected from 1 to 2. But from 2 to 3 there is no path. So I have to skip that and go for 2 to 4. And whenever I uh, encounter any edge like this, 6 I reach 1 here. This is not possible. Why? Because 1 is repeated. One, uh, the nodes which are visited before also which uh, should not repeat again. Okay. How we are checking that? That will be from here. Okay. If there is a path then we will enter this uh, loop here. In this loop we will uh, we'll be checking from j is equal to 1 to k. Whatever vertex we have um, already included in this um, array here that should not be same before also okay means x of k will be compared with all the values from j is equal to 1 to k if any vertex um, is found out to be same it will break out of this loop if it is not then it will um, see if k is less than n or k is equal to n and the last vertex to first uh, vertex there is a edge if there is an edge from last to, uh, last to first vertex there should be an edge between the last and the first vertex because the, uh, that is one of the rules of uh, the Hamiltonian cycle. The last and the first vertex should have an edge. Okay, That will be checked. If it is true, it will return the value. Okay, It will return as true. Then when it returns as true, at that time here we will get as true. Okay, And we will proceed further. And then it will be found out if all the uh, vertices are visited means k is equal to n. If it is uh, if it's true, we will print out the sequence. Else we will uh, pass to the next value. Means if there, uh, if there are some more nodes left all the vertices are not done then we will pass for the next uh, vertex okay, by using k plus 1. Then we will try for the next vertex here and then again we will come here and then pass for the next vertex till we reach the end. Okay. If we found out we will print else we will keep on trying until all the combinations are tried. Okay. So finally we will uh, at last uh, till the end of the loop we will have all the possible combinations.